this was Yankee Stadium, the way it looked when they built it in 1923, and the way it looked unendingly until 1973. During that time, apart perhaps only from the Roman Coliseum, Yankee Stadium became the most renowned arena in the entire world. But as you can see now, it's a different Yankee Stadium, about to open all over again, new and changed. To come into the new Yankee Stadium for the first time, you're immediately struck by the difference. It's hard to reconcile the new with the old. The very contours of the ballpark, the playing dimensions are different. Gone are the poles that once blocked vision for so many spectators. There's not a bad seat in the house now. The brightness of the colors, every seat Yankee blue. And of course, even as you look around the great stadium, there are the workmen putting on the final finishing touches to the ballpark itself. But you can't be here. You can't be on these Yankee dugout steps where I am now and not live with the nostalgia of what's been here before. Remember that man, Don Lawson, in this situation, October 8, 1956, fifth game of the World Series against the then Brooklyn Dodgers. Lawson, the no wind-up pitcher, Dale Mitchell, the batter. Called strike three, the end of the game, the only perfect game in World Series history. And look at Yogi Berra and the rest of the Yankee teammates. And then this one too, 1952. Johnny Mize in the World Series against the Dodgers. An apparent home run, but no. Carl Farello, the steadfast right fielder, corralling the ball and leaning on that short fence for protection. That's the way he made the catch, using that short fence. But as you can see, it's a different wall now, nine feet high. And Farello, when he made that catch, had a wall that was about this high. Even the right field dimensions have changed. In those years, the right field line was 296 feet. Now, you can see the workmen applying the finishing touches to the new distance, 310 feet. Then as we move from right field toward center, those old bleacher benches are gone. Instead, Beautiful new individual seats for the fans. And above those seats, a bright new modernistic electric scoreboard which will have such features as instant replay. And above the scoreboard, recognize that, the old Yankee Stadium facade, retained, transplanted for decorative purposes and to remind fans of the way Yankee Stadium used to be. Continuing on down toward center field, the old monuments of renowned Yankee greats of the past are gone. Not in center field any longer, but instead behind those blue outfield walls separating the two bullpens. As a result, you won't see scenes like this one anymore. You won't see Bobby Mercer right there on your screen chasing behind the monuments to get hold of the baseball. No, that's all part of the past. And the fences aren't as deep as they were either. Remember 1947, the World Series, a little fellow named Al John Frito. Remember this catch on a long drive by Joe DiMaggio and the usually imperturbable Joe kicking at the dirt in disgust when he realized John Frito had caught it. What about this scene? 1955, seventh and final game, Barrett the plate for the Yankees and a little outfielder in left field for the Dodgers. Sandy Amaros going over and making the catch when it didn't seem possible to even get to the ball. That saved the Dodgers' first World Series victory ever. And that points up, folks, the changes that have been wrought in the dimensions of Yankee Stadium. Let me show you this. This is the way the stadium used to be, and this is what they call Death Valley. 402 in left on verging on left center, 457 left center, 461 dead center, 407. They used to go crazy trying to hit the ball out under those dimensions. But now, well, just to show you vividly exactly what would have happened, Amaro still would have made the catch on Barra. It's gone from 301 down the foul line to 312. But DiMaggio, whose ball was caught by John Frito out here at the 402 mark, would have had a home run. Death Valley's been cut down, 387 against 402, 430 against 457. 
417 against 461, 385 against 407. The fans are going to like it a lot better, and you can be sure the players will, too. Upstairs on the mezzanine level, for the man who can afford it, there is the luxury suite, which costs 19000 bucks for the baseball season. What do you get for the 19000 Well, you get a lounge suite that includes a television set, a refrigerator, a coffee maker, comfortable enough furnishings, and the inevitable pictures of Yankee grades past and present. And as part of the lounge suite, you get a box containing 14 seats. Remember, 19,000 bucks per season for the man who can afford it. A look at the new Yankee Stadium. In brief, it will seat about 54,500 for baseball. It used to seat more than that, something like 61.5. They'll seat close to 60,000 for football. It used to seat above 62,000 for football. There is potential for expansion with more seats here. How much did it cost? Well, estimates vary, but Gabe Paul, the president of the Yankees, said for the stadium itself, it cost 45 million. There are adjacent costs, some paid privately, like the Kinney Garage parking interests. And there are other costs redounding to the city in terms of public road construction and the rest. So it cost a lot of money, a lot more than was anticipated. Is it worth it? Because the stadium renovation was born in controversy and still lives in it. Everybody in the nation knows of the dire economic plight of New York City. What truly is the order of priorities for a city? Isn't it lodged in housing, many say, in schools and all of the rest? Well, John Lindsay was the mayor of New York City when this renovation began. He weighed all of those priorities and he made his judgment. He saw the polo grounds become instead a public housing project. You can look at it for yourself. The same was true in Brooklyn when the Dodgers deserted. Two teams departing from this city. And then he was hit with the final stroke. Wellington Marab, the Giants, moving across the river to New Jersey, where they are building a sports complex that's costing well in excess of $200 million. He decided the Yankees belonged in New York, wanted them to stay there. So he undertook this project. Whether he's right or not, this is the result. It's close to ready. It's the new Yankee Stadium. In fairness, it's a good-looking place. Comfortable, spacious, and with a concern for the contemporary in all respects.